Wake up, you bastards! Is there anyone there? Yes, what do you see? Iceberg, right ahead! Movies are a special medium in how they can tell ordinary stories in an extraordinary way. From powerhouse performances to scores that impact us on a deeply emotional level, every moving piece is a part of a whole. For Titanic, filmmaker James Cameron used over an hour of carefully crafted stunt work and set design to tell the story of ordinary people in an extraordinary circumstance. Before we get too deep in the water, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on all our latest videos. Being one of the highest grossing movies of all time on the cusp of its 25th anniversary, Titanic doesn't need a whole lot of context. Written and directed by James Cameron and released in 1997, Titanic went on to gross over $2.2 billion. The story focused on Rose DeWitt Bucator, played by Kate Winslet, a teenager forced into engagement to preserve her family's wealth, who falls in love with a young lower-class artist named Jack Dawson, played by Leonardo DiCaprio. Even before the film's release, the word Titanic had already become synonymous with abject failure, hubris, and shipwrecks. We as an audience knew going in how this movie was going to end. The ship will sink. But the reason people still flocked in droves was Cameron's penchant for entangling emotions with high-level spectacle. In a lot of filmmakers' hands, the sinking of the Titanic, with its frenzied shots, quick asides, and myriad of characters, would be disorienting. But working with stunt coordinator Simon Crane and visual effects supervisor Mark Lassoff, they were able to make a movie that not only awed you with its attention to detail, but told quick, concise stories about the ordinary people aboard the ship. In order to do that, Cameron constructed a near-life-size replica of the Titanic, much of it made from rubber to protect the performers and a water tank to contain it. The tank alone cost $40 million, and there are countless miniatures, hydraulics to tilt each half of the ship, extras with rollers attached to their clothing so they could slide more easily, and on and on. While it's impossible to practically recreate a crash of that magnitude, Cameron shares a trait with most gifted directors, an ability to get creative with their problem solving. When filming the sinking, the bow of the ship was able to tilt six degrees, with the stern able to tilt up to about 180 degrees. Cameron cleverly used Dutch angles, turning the camera on its roll axis, then composited in a waterline to give the illusion of sharper angles that gave the feeling of sinking. All of this helped the performers really sell the feeling of weightlessness on screen. As opposed to the famous clip of Batman and Robin scaling the building wall, we immediately fear for the people as they dangle and hold tight for survival. It's not impossible to watch behind the scenes footage and think of classic Hong Kong wire work, but instead of the almost ethereal floating sensations of those films, the stunt team imbues weight and impact. As the carnage carries on, we get brief snippets of various passengers and crew dealing with the inevitability laid out before them. It's here we start to get flashes of Cameron's strongest suit, his empathy and adoration of love stories. Much has already been said about the Titanic being a love story first and the examination of one of nautical history's greatest disasters second. Cameron himself stated he pitched the movie as Romeo and Juliet on a shipwreck. Cameron's entire filmography is filled with love stories, from two people fighting desperately to rekindle their marriage in True Lies to the time travel inevitability of true love in Terminator. There are so many threads in everything he creates that tries desperately to understand the most basic of human emotions. That fixation is the perfect complement to his technical ability and curiosity. In order to make those small moments work, Cameron knows he has to give us something visually appealing. Which brings us to Captain Edward John Smith. Played by Bernard Hill and based on his real-life counterpart, Captain Smith was well-liked amongst the upper class and was for all intents and purposes an accomplished seafarer on his literal last voyage. Cameron avoids any sort of blame game, most of which had all been debunked after the real-life sinking. There's Smith and he's standing there and he's got the iceberg warning in his f***ing hand, excuse me, his hand, and he's ordering more speed. Instead, what we're presented with is one of Cameron's most striking visual moments. Cameron is an accomplished visual artist himself. It's, in fact, his hand drawing Kate Winslet like the proverbial French girl. He's an artist who has an inner understanding of composition through his lens. As the ocean water begins to bend the windows to its whims, Captain Smith holds fast to the ship's wheel. When the water crushes through and begins to envelop Smith, Cameron has the actor crowd over the wheel. His shoulders slightly rise, the water high above him. A sense of inevitability and acceptance in just a few brief seconds of film. Moments like that litter the back half of Titanic. 
impressionistic paintings that make the viewer take a breath and reckon with what's happening. Down in the boiler room, as two men struggle to shut a door, we watch them thrash relentlessly against the face of a rushing tide. It's these small moments where we can't help but wonder if they'll make it and make us forget that we already know the answer. Cameron doesn't give us just moments of defeat, though. He elegantly moves back and forth between spectacle and emotion. As the ship's band famously plays, water begins to surround them. Their dedication feels like a victory. It's the same when we watch an elderly couple lie together, just like, we presume, they always have. Then there are moments that seem to perfectly marry his visual storytelling and tendency to push the technical envelope. In an article with Before and Afters for Titanic's 20th anniversary, key animator Andy Jones recalled animating the now infamous Propeller Man. After Cameron told him the shot felt off, Jones stated he wanted me to double check the math on it. I assured him that the distance and rate of speed the figure was falling was correct. He then asked me to double the distance he falls from after hitting the propeller to the water. It's that simple understanding that something was off kilter, so the logic needed to be slightly bent that bears much of Titanic's weight. That inclination more than likely comes from Cameron's understanding of horror and thriller tropes. The Terminator is widely considered a slasher movie, and while Aliens was much more action than Haunted House in Space, there are still moments of terror. There's a reason comedy and horror have so much in common, and it's often attributed to its reliance on timing. And timing is something Cameron clearly understands. When one man falls from the ship and clips off a table, there's a hurried acceleration in his spin. One that probably isn't too realistic, but as Cameron insisted with the propeller, it felt harder. In a more literal usage of timing, it's been found that if you count only the time spent on the ship and not the present day scenes, the over three hour run time clocks in at two hours and 40 minutes, which is the time most believe it took the actual ship to sink. That level of attention to detail just adds to the overall feeling of immersion that Titanic still carries. There are meticulously crafted interiors and props, the usage of practical effects and stunt work married to breakthrough CGI. There's a real world tangibility that gives us an emotional link his later work with the Avatar franchise sometimes lacks. And that's not to say that those movies are lesser by any means, only that there's a dissonance between real people acting in frame on set and motion captured actors in a computer generated world. The technical prowess is groundbreaking and changing what stories can be told, but it's important to remember that there was a moment in 1997 where Cameron perfected how to make a blockbuster. It's this melding of Cameron's obsessions, his steadfastness on creating a feeling that makes the stunts of Titanic stay with us a quarter of a century after its release. Otherwise, the entire thing would come across as either cold and technical or completely voyeuristic. Hollywood has a long history with disaster movies, and as an audience, we love to watch conflict. Most often, that's an antagonist and protagonist going head to head over conflicting ideals. But what better antagonist than nature or our own hubris? And what better conflicting ideal than our want to live and love? Movies like Titanic don't carry on because they're impressive. They stay with us because they gave us a feeling. Part of that feeling comes from us being able to relate, and a large part of that relatability is thanks to the hardworking stunt performers and crew who showed us what humanity really can accomplish in the face of disaster. So what do you think? What were some of your favorite moments of triumph or defeat during the movie? Let us know down in the comments below, and while you're here, why not check out some of our other stunt videos below?